guys. My name is Victor Gonzalez and I'm an art educator here at the Bakersfield Museum of Art. And today we're going to be creating paint using flour. And then we're gonna be using those paints to make our very own landscape painting. Uh, side note, all the paint that we'll be making today is totally safe for children of all ages. Since we're going to make several different colors, let's talk a little bit about color first. Uh, color is the element of art that is produced when light strikes an object and is reflected back to our eyes, creating the visual sensation that we see. So think about flowers, um, a sun, sunrise or sunsets, um, the clothes that you wear, um, the cartoons that you watch, uh, the plants outside you see when you go for a walk, the sky. Um, it's, just, there, it's all about the way light reflects back to us. Um, there are also several different categories of color, and the four we'll be talking about today are primary, secondary, warm, and cool colors. Let's use my color wheel here to talk about warm and cool colors. Warm colors include red, orange, and yellow, or even a combination of the three. Um, these colors are wonderful ways to make a piece or a space feel warm. Um, sunrises and sunsets are a perfect example of the usage of warm colors. And warm colors are very stimulating and connect emotionally to warmth. So with these associations, uh, warm colors can convey messages of happiness, energy, and even heat. So cool colors can include violet, blue, and green. And cool color artwork can be hung in spaces to provide a sense of calmness. And even though these colors are, on, are not on the brightest of the spectrum, they can still provide us a, an effect of relaxation, coolness, and peace. And these colors can range from the icy cold blues to Mediterranean turquoises. Decorators often use these um, colors in spas, bathrooms, and even other quiet environments. And a fun fact about blue, it can be reused to lower uh, your heart rate and reduce the appetite. So before we start today's project, let's go over some of the materials that we will be using. Um, make sure you have a mixing bowl. This is my green one. Um, you will also be needing flour, um, also, then salt. I have popcorn salt, but table salt also works. Some measuring cups. I have two different kinds here, Whatever, whichever one will work. Um, then you'll need some mixing utensils. I have a mixing serving spoon here for the bowl and then a couple of little plastic spoons here for my um, paint later when I mix those. Um, food coloring. I have all four colors, red, blue, yellow, and green. Um, and then I'll also show you how to mix some colors if you want some different ones more than that. Um, here are some plastic cups for the paint mixture later. If you know I have little plastic cups or anything like this, um, plastic receivable bags should work just fine. Um, make sure to always cover your tabletop that you're working on or your space that you're working on when you're working with paints because um, paint does get messy. So I have newspaper here and then for our little landscape painting that we'll be making later, I have a half sheet of paper. Um, for these types of paintings, um, it's best to use some a thicker paper like I have here, this is some watercolor paper, but also cardboard is really good to work with this type of paint as well. So let's get started. So to first step, in a large mixing bowl that we have here, we will pour white flour, water, and salt into a bowl. So it'll be one cup of water, so I have that right here already prepared, one cup of water, then one and a half cups of white flour and table salt. So we'll pour the white flour, and then the table salts. You will then mix the ingredients into a smooth liquid. Um, you can add more water if the mixture is thick. It most likely will be pretty thick at first. Um, but what happens is mixing the flour and the salt with water helps stiffen the water to create a mold. So then the more water you add, the smoother the mixture will become. So now that my mixture is pretty smooth enough, it's not as lumpy anymore as it once was, uh, the mixture is a quick drawing, quick drying, non-toxic paint for children. So as long as you keep the ingredients in the same ratio, you can create more or less depending on how much paint you need. 
Um, now we will divide the, the paint into containers. You can even use a resealable bag like I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to take my little cups that I have here and just start to fill it up. Probably about halfway. Right there should be just fine. All right, so now that I have my mixtures divided into my cups, um, one thing to, to remember, if you're using resealable bags, you can cut a corner and use the bag as a paint dispenser while painting. So now for our, to make, to turn these mixtures into colors, we're going to pour two drops of food coloring into your mixture, divide it into containers or bags, and you will stir well until you reach a solid color. So I'll go ahead and put a little spoon in each one of these here. And I'll have to go get some more spoons. Before we start mixing, if you don't have a little plastic spoon, just make anything can be a mixing stick. It be a toothpick or a popsicle stick, just anything that you can find. Um, like I said, go ahead and start with two drops of food coloring in your cups first, but then after that, if you want to make it darker, uh, you can continue to add more drops after that. Um, if you only have primary colors first, like I have blue, red, and yellow, um, you can color, you can make color mix certain food colors together to achieve new colors, which I'll show you in just a minute. But we will start with the, the primary colors first. So let's go ahead and begin with blue. One, two. All right, and let's see how that works. As you can see, it is coming out kind of light. And it's okay if it comes out of the cup a little bit like I just did. That's what the newspaper is there for. All right, but if you want it darker than that, you can go ahead and add more food coloring. Now I'll move on to the other two primary colors, red and yellow. So now that I have my primary colors, red, blue, and yellow already mixed, we will move on to some other colors. I'm going to also create green, purple, and orange. Um, as you can see, I only have four food coloring bottles here, so I'll have to make some of them. Luckily, green did come in the package, but so. But if you didn't have green, I'm just letting you know that blue and yellow food colors will also make green as well. So let me just go ahead and start with the green. And then for purple, you'll mix primary colors, blue and red. More of a violet. Remember, if you want them darker, you just need to add more food coloring drops. I'm pretty satisfied with the way this looks right now. Then for orange, red and yellow. Oh, an extra drop in there. Alrighty, so we have our primary colors and our complementary colors. Um, you know, the mixtures might end up a little looking a little thick. Just feel free to add some more water to thin out the mixture with some with some water here. Um, also, if, for this particular piece, I will also be wanting some brown. So to make brown, you just combine red and green.
And it's not a really pretty color when it mixes, but it works. Alrighty, so there is my assortment of colors. Now we'll move on to creating our very own little landscapes. Um, for these piece, for these pieces and these paints, um, like I said earlier, make sure you use paint, these paint, this paint on thick paper or cardboard. The mixture will stay fresh for about two weeks. After that, it will begin to harden. So let's go ahead and move on to our painting. All right, so now we'll be using our paint to create our very own landscape piece. Um, just a couple of things to think about before you start your piece, uh, like a couple of questions. What is your favorite place to visit? Is it the beach? Is it a city? Is it a park? Is it the mountains? Um, is it a theme park like Disneyland? Um, do you enjoy um, making your, your paintings look very realistic or abstract? So like, would you make the sky purple or the grass red? Um, it's all up to you. You don't have to make it look exactly like the way you see it. But if you are making it look very realistic and you're actually looking at something, don't feel pressure to include every single detail, just the details that actually make it a um, landscape. Also embrace imperfection um, and everything, nothing has to look perfect. Um, so for me, I like to go to the beach. Um, so I will be creating a little beach sunset for you. Also when painting, the more water symbols of the time that you add to your paints on your brush, the more the lighter or translucent it will become. So right now I'm going to go ahead and start my painting without water, just very dry brush. So I have my piece started. Um, next I will work with on the, adding the ocean and the sunset. One, another thing to remember about your landscapes, whatever you, it is divided up into three different spaces. You have your foreground, middle ground, and background. Whatever is in your foreground of your landscape piece is probably gonna be look bigger and larger. Your middle ground is would be, will, will look as big as the foreground and then the largest part in the back is farther away if you have anything back there. For me, I'll just probably have like a palm tree or a couple of things up in the front. So that will probably look the biggest in the rest of the piece. So here we go. We'll start with some water here. we go you guys I can't wait to see what your pieces look like thanks for watching you guys I hope you had a great time uh, make sure to sign up for our newsletter at bmoa.org connect for all the latest bmoa news also visit our website bmoa.org museum at home for more art related projects uh, also make sure to share your projects with us on social media you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the bmoa and on Twitter at bmoa um, so also make sure to stay safe, stay healthy, you guys, and see you next time. Bye.
there we go, you guys. I can't wait to see what your pieces look like. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you had a great time. Uh, make sure to sign up for our newsletter at bmoa.org slash connect for all the latest BMOA news. Also visit our website, bmoa.org slash museum at home for more art-related projects. Uh, also make sure to share your projects with us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the BMOA and on Twitter at BMOA. Um, so also make sure to stay safe, stay healthy, you guys, and see you next time. Bye.